is this guy this is a character or a commander that rise of kingdoms has used in their official facebook and instagram posts to promote the five-year anniversary of the game and yet we have no idea who this is so today we're going to talk about my theories as to who this might be and then later in the video we're going to go over the latest face to face with the developers and i'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on what i think is important here and especially we're going to go over the upcoming proposed changes to the equipment system and I, i'm going to put this nicely but i've got some feedback for the equipment changes uh it's I'm not feel I'm not feeling great about it I'm not feeling great about it so we're gonna talk about that later but first what's going on guys cheers okay let's jump right into dissecting this Facebook post because I saw this uh it looks like it was yesterday they posted it it was only a couple of minutes after they posted it that I first saw this both on here and on Instagram and I was super confused as to who this might be okay if we look here this is obviously the weapon from Joan of Arc Prime it's literally just copy and paste it is the exact same thing and if we compare the architecture of the France buildings here we can kind of take a look and say that yeah it's pretty close to the French architecture in the back and we also know that France has a hospital healing speed bonus and you can see that they're clearly these soldiers back here are being healed so I think think that this is pointing towards being a French character but that still begs the question like who actually is this right there's a couple of key features here we have this white and gold helmet with a blue I I, I never know the official term of this but it's basically like the uh the bristles that come out of the helmet I don't know what that's actually called surely somebody will know in the comment section below perhaps but we've got that and then we also have you know some pretty obvious like facial hair facial features etc but there there's no clothes that we can go off of that you know maybe has little symbols on it or maybe there's armor versus chain mail or something like that so we really don't know okay we, we have no idea clearly this is stating that you should not use tier one units but you should be using tier five units but again that just does not that doesn't help us you know understand who this gentleman actually is and I was thinking like okay surely they didn't just randomly make up a character for this post right like this is such a an unimportant post it's literally just you fill in the blanks and you have a chance to win uh, some gems some training speed ups uh, and things like that right uh, th like that's literally all this is and they do this all the time there's always posts like this over on their Facebook so if you guys didn't know that go ahead and follow them over on Facebook but I tried to go through the comments over here on Facebook and I'm not going to show it because these are like real people names and pictures um I went through the comments and nobody seems to even be questioning who this character is so I thought okay surely surely this has to be someone who's already in the game so I was going through here right and my first thought was okay maybe it's Leonidas because obviously most recently we got the Greece civilization and there has been quite a bit of you know ancient Greece woven into their different marketing and their posts and things like that so I pulled up Leonidas here and yes the you know the bristles on the helmet is the same it's obviously uh you know a different color but it's still it's it's pretty close um the facial hair is similar as well and I also think that his nose is relatively similar as well but the facial hair isn't exactly the same and the biggest difference here is the helmet right the helmet for Leonidas in game is all gold and it comes to like this point right at the top here and then if we take a look at the character over in the in the picture um it's completely different right it's got the white and the gold and it's it just looks it doesn't look anything like the helmet on Leonidas okay um so it could possibly be um sort of a different artistic rendition of Leonidas I guess even though the beard is a little bit wrong the helmet is completely wrong um his like this is the closest that I could think of I also thought of Edward of Woodstock right because Joan of Arc in the game you know when she's walking around your city she does reference the Black Prince a couple of times so I thought okay maybe they used Edward and Joan kind of interchangeably on the French themed picture uh and you know here we have this not it's not the same it's it's just not the same right his beard is much longer in game than it is uh over here and again the helmet is completely different it is completely different obviously he has the the banana coming out of the top of his and, and basically that that comes down to cover his massive beard right that's what that's what the banana actually is 
um but it's just it looks nothing alike it just looks nothing alike okay we obviously have the big blue bristles on the back here we don't see any of that on the actual Edward of Woodstock and of course he's wearing black and gold not white and gold so again I don't know if this is maybe a different artistic rendering of Edward of Woodstock with just a much shorter beard perhaps and a different helmet I have no idea but really uh, I've got no other choices right really Leonidas and Edward of Woodstock were the closest that I could come to in the game of who this might actually be okay is it Henry it can't be Henry because Henry doesn't this it's the wrong helmet it's the wrong everything if we look at maybe Flavius Flavius has that same you know uh bristles here um but again like I don't think that the beard and the face shape are even close right they're not even close it's not even uh, remotely close in fact um but and he also his helmet here is again white and gold I feel like that is a very distinctive helmet design and as you can see on Flavius in the game his is silver with like gold on the sides so I really have no idea who this um character is I have no idea even where to begin with trying to figure this out um because we don't really have that many clues it might be a French commander it might be a French character um I thought maybe this is what some of the units looked like but the throwing axemen don't look like this um I can't think of any units that would have this shape or facial structure or anything like that so I don't know who this is guys I really have no clue and maybe you in the comments section below can throw your ideas of who this might be because I am at a loss I cannot figure this out alone uh because we literally just don't have anything to go off of and also is this a new character is this a new commander who is this uh and if it's not a new commander or character then what are they doing in this photograph like did did rise of kingdoms go out of their way to design a brand new character just for this picture I find that hard to believe because they have to pay their artists to make you know these these photos right so I don't know where this came from I have no idea maybe they used AI to generate this character and just typed in like you know AI please generate a character that looks like a rise of kingdoms character I have no idea okay I have no clue it seems unlikely to me that they would create a character just for this post it's possible um or is this a sneak peek for a future commander this is totally possible and in fact they actually did this before way back in the day uh, they actually revealed Mulan in a promotional piece of artwork before she was in the game in fact she was in a promotional piece of artwork like a year before she actually came to rise of kingdoms and I don't think I have the picture saved on my computer anywhere and it would take a long time to go find it uh, but it was basically a picture of a bunch of commanders sitting around a campfire and you could just see Mulan just sitting right there and nobody even realized it nobody questioned it nobody everyone just thought it was just a, another character or whatever uh, and then a year later she's dropped in the game and people were like oh my god wait that was the character from the picture from a year ago right so it's not unlikely or it's not I should say it's not impossible for rise of kingdoms to tease a new commander or new character in a promotional post because they've done it before but it is very odd and it is not something that they've done in a very long time so I have no idea what to make of this and again I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below as to who you think this gentleman might be and also we have Luce in the game right now right uh and so I thought like oh well maybe it's like the other infantry but we already know who the other infantry is it's Gorgo it was announced officially from rise of kingdoms we know Luce and Gorgo are coming at the same time so I don't know is this going to be an a third infantry commander possibly I think that's unlikely but I don't know what to make of this okay now let's go over the face to face with the developers and I'm not going to read through everything here because I'm sure you've already read it yourself or you've seen other content creators talk about it but the first question basically has to do with players that are in mega kingdoms okay kingdoms that are Imperium with an insane amount of players basically they're saying that their power is too high and it's really hard to match for kvk and the answer from the developers is that they know that this is a problem they've talked about it for a while now and their solution is that if you have over 800 active city hall 25 
players then your kingdom will be broken up into a multi queue where you can queue up for multiple kvks with separate units of players from your kingdom to participate in those uh those kvks right so effectively you're dividing up your kingdom because you know some of these mega kingdoms have 10 percent of their players are are more powerful than like an entire other kingdom right so you know they can break up and and fight in multiple kvks at the same time and it would be fine um my thought on this is that this is a very odd way to answer the the problem um the problem here is basically that there there exists a handful of mega kingdoms and there exists plenty of kingdoms that are actually dead okay there are literally hundreds of kingdoms in the game that have virtually no active players okay um and i think that that's a huge problem and we've never seen rise of kingdoms go in and merge these dead servers and i think that they need to start doing that they need to start making these dead servers actually places where players can play right because it's basically like a waste of a server right i mean that's really what it is i feel like why just have all these dead servers it makes no sense and then also i feel like there should be some sort of cap as to how much power you can have in a kingdom why are we allowing uh these mega kingdoms to just exist on their own and like look i i get that this is a multiplayer game and you want to play with your friends right i totally understand that but i think that if you capped a kingdom at you know a, a thousand players or you know however many maybe that's too low maybe it's 1500 maybe it's 2000 i don't know and maybe there does exist some sort of cap that i'm not aware of I, i'm not sure but it seems to me like they probably should do more to prevent mega kingdoms from existing and then combine a bunch of the old dead servers into servers that can actually function right uh because players that are in dead servers just quit the game that's just the truth if there's no one there to play with they're gonna quit so you might as well merge them that's my thoughts on this at the end of the day is this a good solution yeah i think this will probably solve the problem uh, i just think that they're going about it like they're basically they're not treating the symptom of the problem they're just giving those players an out so yeah i guess that's fine uh this is the the big one here what adjustments what kind of adjustments can we expect for equipment will new higher level equipment be added okay now this is a doozy okay this is a doozy after the recent equipment update roundtable we revised our original plan and drafted a new one okay here is the plan other than level 50 engineering weapons we will not be introducing new level 50 and level 55 equipment for the time being okay so in the future they reserve the right to do so just saying just saying okay and this is this is the problem uh and we're going to talk about this uh, as we go through here but the 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 solution that they have proposed in these bullet points actually makes it th th it doesn't solve the problem okay the the problem with introducing new higher level equipment with higher stats is that your old equipment becomes effectively irrelevant okay um or not not irrelevant but you know you basically have to get rid of it so that way you can make new stuff and just for the record this is a problem exclusive to players who have spent six figures on the game like introducing new equipment in rise of kingdoms doesn't actually do anything for 99 percent of players i actually made a youtube short the other day that showed that 93.3 percent of players don't even get tier four units okay so statistically 99.9 percent .9 of players were not affected by this upcoming equipment update and i know you're already writing a comment i know you're mad at me for saying that but that's the data okay yes i know there's farms yes i know there's bots whatever but even if it's like let's say i'm way off it's still 90 percent, right so just to be clear the proposed changes actually didn't affect almost all of you watching this answer that they propose here leaves them in the same exact position that they were in already and i don't know how they don't see that so i'm gonna try to be as constructive as possible but what they're saying here for the time being is that they're still considering the possibility of adding new level higher level equipment in the future maybe a year two years three years from now it doesn't matter they're going to run into the same exact problem where players are going to complain that they're going to have to dismantle their existing equipment and let me explain why that's the case okay because I, this is mind-blowing to me that that they don't see that they're they're actually not they're not solving the problem and it's really concerning okay adjustments to the season of conquest combat shop will be canceled level 50 and 55 equipment blueprints will not be available in the shop and level 50 season of conquest equipment blueprints will not be introduced in other events okay so basically they took out the kvk weapons and helmets from the shop when they first announced these changes uh, and now they're saying that this will be canceled okay now what, what's confusing to me 
is that the kvk helmets and weapons are level 50. the ones that are already in the game they're level 50 right what this says is level 50 blueprints will not be in the shop so they took out the kvk weapons and helmets and then are they not putting them back and they're not going to be in events so how like how are new players going to get the kvk weapons and helmets they probably misspoke here what they're probably saying is that they're just going to revert the shop to how it was before that's what i that's what i think is going to happen even though they have worded this horribly okay they basically said we're not putting level 50 equipment in the shop even though it used to be in the shop in the form of kvk weapons and stuff i think what they're saying is new level 50 and new level 55 stuff will not be and they will just revert the shop to how it was okay fine optimizations on the refund rules for dismantled legendary equipment will be cancelled dismantling refined equipment will not grant more materials this i think is a huge problem okay and this was the the real the, the real issue right um it was you could have solved um the the problem originally like look at this we've got paragraphs here okay we've got paragraphs this has gotten way out of hand all you really had to do was give players 100 refunds on their on their equipment that would have been it right like if you could dismantle legendaries and get 100 of the materials back i think that would have solved the problem right if you take into account refinement level if you have a special talent iconics whatever right like if you have a special talented hammer of the sun and moon with an iconic crystal and you dismantle it you should get back all of the materials from the original craft all the materials that you spent getting the special talent okay uh and if you proc it on the first craft you should not get anything bonus because you got lucky okay and also you should get back the iconic crystal that's the if they implemented that it actually would have solved the problem from the beginning and we would not have had to go through all this they could have continued to implement their new equipment and everything would have been fine sure a couple of players may have still complained whatever okay whatever it is what it is um we would have moved on and you would have been able to just dismantle your old stuff craft your new stuff and again this would have only applied to like one percent of the player base okay and i know that you're probably watching this video uh because you're invested in rise of kingdoms um so yes for you maybe it would have been awful but 99 of the players would have just moved on and it would have been fine this is a huge mistake i think this is a huge mistake i think this doing this was like this single it was the easiest way to solve the problem and they have come out and flat out said that they're not gonna do it so i, I don't i don't understand what the logic is there perhaps they can explain that better in a follow-up mail but again this was your solution and you've thrown it out that's a little bit awkward okay the iconic equipment system will be updated now this is the big part okay and this is the the part where like it all doesn't make any sense anymore because uh, up until this point basically all of this has been them retracting all the changes right the first three bullet points are them saying we're putting the shot back to how it was we're not changing the dismantling rules the everything is going back to how it was okay but bullet point four is where things start to change all right after a piece of equipment is upgraded to iconic equipment with iconic crystals the equipment can be further upgraded these subsequent upgrades will mainly cost existing equipment blueprints and materials they will not cost iconic crystals okay so what this is saying is that you craft your hammer of sun and moon okay uh you put an iconic crystal into that piece regardless of it of if it has a special talent or not and then from that point forward you can upgrade your hammer of sun and moon uh, by using materials and blueprints in order to gain more stats okay that is what they're saying here bullet point five says trial of the lost kingdom will continue to be a joke everyone already knows that bullet point six says after the material costs to forge slash refine the sacred dominion basically the kvk weapons and helmets have been adjusted we will refund excess materials starting from september 21st okay so that was yesterday at the time of recording this if you have forged those equipments prior to august 22nd you will receive excess materials after logging out of the game and logging back in okay so basically they changed the cost for the level 50 the existing level 50 kvk equipment they reduced the cost and here they're saying that they will give you a refund for the difference of those if you crafted it before august 22nd bullet point seven equipment will gain different new attributes when they are upgraded to iconic equipment equipment of different levels and slots require different amounts and types of materials 
to be upgraded to iconic equipment okay so what this is saying is that as you're adding levels to your hammer of sun and moon for example okay it will gain different new attributes so if we jump over to the hammer of sun and moon you'll see that the hammer of sun and moon gives you infantry attack plus 25 percent so once you add an iconic crystal to it you gain your attributes and then as you increase or further upgrade that piece it's saying that it could possibly gain new and different attributes okay now what i want to know and this is huge please please don't make it random don't make it random bro don't make it random don't make it random don't make it random don't make it random i cannot stress how important it is that these attributes not be randomized they cannot be randomized okay i really hope that lilith has learned their lesson from uh, armaments please please do not make the new attributes random i'm begging you that is taking the equipment system out back and putting a shotgun to its head that will just ruin the equipment system do not do that please okay i, I again i really cannot stress this enough players will quit if it's random they will quit the community has already been up in arms with this change you can't make the new you cannot make it random it it, it cannot be random i cannot stress that enough that will break the system so please if there's one thing the developers listen to me about it, it i hope it's this the new different attributes i hope that we know what they are and we can see our progress towards it that would be good i'm i'm fine with that okay i'm fine with it also your kvk weapon when you're upgrading it is going to cost more than your non kvk weapons so the set pieces that are level 45 will be cheaper to upgrade than your kvk helmet and your kvk weapons that's what this is saying okay then you might be saying omniarch why would they be more here's why bullet point eight and this bullet point eight is where it all falls apart compared to level 45 equipment of the same slot season of conquest equipment require more materials they will also gain greater bonuses if they are upgraded after being made into iconics okay this is the bullet point that makes the rest of this po pointless right and I'm not trying to like be um I'm not trying to like be rude or anything but like this this actually throws all of it out, out of the into the garbage right because what this is saying is that equipment of a higher level costs more to upgrade and gains more stats as a result okay now that that sounds like it makes sense on paper right like if you're going to spend more to upgrade it then you should get more stats fine but then what happens in a year when they introduce level 55 equipment they've already said in the bullet point that they for the time being they're not going to introduce more equipment okay so that means in the future they could so let's say we spend the next year upgrading our iconic equipment and then they introduce level 55 equipment well what happens then level 55 equipment by the logic of bullet point eight by the logic of their own mail here it will have better stats and that was the problem from the beginning players were mad that they were introducing new equipment with more stats that was the problem okay so bullet point eight here says that higher level equipment see it's comparing the kvk weapons and helmets which are level 50 to level 45. it's saying it will gain greater bonuses so if they introduce new level 50 or new level 55 then that will gain greater bonuses than level 50 equipment okay so we are right back at square one where this system they still can't do anything with the equipment system moving forward if they ever try to add higher level equipment we will end up in the exact same position that we were in the moment that they announced that they were planning on changing it right and that is that again if we spend the next year upgrading our kvk weapons and helmets and then they introduce a new level 55 equipment well now you you would have been better off saving those materials and investing it into the level 55 equipment and upgrading that because they're going to gain more stats it says it right here it gains greater bonuses because it's a higher level and the problem is bullet point three you're not gonna get back the stuff you get from dismantling it so we will literally i can't stress this enough, this enough we will end up in the exact same scenario if they ever try to add more equipment and I think they will. I think they will add more equipment. And I think they should add more equipment, but not like this. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Okay, let's look at the last bullet point here. It says 
after a piece of equipment is upgraded to iconic it will inherit its previous refinement level and special talent it will also gain a bonus to its attributes okay it already gains a bonus to its attributes um right if i'm understanding this correctly i don't know if this thing is is worded poorly but this is just a really complicated way of saying that we're gonna add upgrades to the equipment system but in a year in two years whatever we're gonna run into the same problem guys it's the same problem because we're gonna upgrade all of our level 50 equipment and then the, you're gonna introduce level 55 equipment right in, in in a year or two and you're not gonna be able to dismantle it but it's still gonna have more stats that's what this is saying like I don't understand guys I don't understand it's not this com it does not have to be nine bullet points you don't have to do nine bullet points okay all you had to do was implement new equipment with the same amount of stats but a different attribute reduce the cost of the existing stuff give people a refund that invested in it and also make it so you can dismantle legendaries and then boom now you have a system that players can dismantle stuff and change to new equipment they're not punished for crafting legendaries and you maintain the ability to in implement new legendaries because players can just dismantle their old stuff to get it that would have been the easiest solution here but instead they're introducing a a whole new system which again i don't hate the idea of upgrading existing equipment that's fine that's fine the problem is bullet point three and bullet point eight basically guarantees that we're going to run into this problem again in the future right that's the problem so i don't know i don't know what they were thinking with this um maybe it's worded poorly maybe they maybe they thought all this through and when they put it in the game it will be good and if that's the case i'll be the first to tell you guys i, I again i from the beginning have said that they should add new equipment i want more equipment i want more variety but it doesn't have to be this complicated guys it's it really doesn't i don't know what what's going on here um guys i recommend you clicking the survey button tell them how you feel about this um if you like this and don't just take my word for it right if you like this change tell them do it i i want them to implement what the majority of players want that's truly how i feel okay i will participate in this system because again i think new equipment is cool i think upgrading your equipment is cool i'm all on board for that i'm not complaining about that at all i will spend money on it i'm i'm honest that's how i that's how i feel about this but again we're kicking the can down the road it doesn't solve the problem players are still going to be mad about this all you have to do is use a little bit of logic to extrapolate this out into the future and you'll see that they will still be prohibited from adding new equipment in the future so let them know how you feel about this let's talk about smite damage okay the newly added smite damage is affected by buffs and debuffs to normal attack damage rather than skill damage that also means it won't trigger skill effects that are triggered by taking or dealing skill damage so that is a massive blow to the luce sargon pairing it is guys it is basically what this is saying is that when dealing skill damage you can inflict the odd debuff well based on what they just said right here okay they just said that it will not trigger effects that are that are triggered by dealing skill damage okay so luce will not be able to spread the odd debuff from sargon if this is 100 accurate okay why introduce smite damage instead of enhancing normal attacks with the addition of new commanders and updates to old commanders the damage factor of damage dealing skills has climbed upwards that is power creep we know that um this has made skill damage and skill damage related buffs increasingly important that is the meta skill damage is the meta right now commanders that rely on normal attack damage buffs uh ie attila previously lacked means of dealing burst damage like skill damage furthermore enhancing normal attack buffs was not enough to solve this problem thus we added to my damage which deals high burst damage while synergizing with normal attack commanders okay so this I agree with 100 obviously there's been a lot of power creep with skill damage and they needed to change something so adding smite damage makes a lot of sense I'm on board this is a good change what I will say though is they reference Attila interesting Lilith why would you reference a cavalry commander when talking about smite damage does this confirm that cavalry is getting smite damage I think it does guys I think that we know for sure that because they had Attila in mind when they implemented smite damage that we know 
there must be smite damage coming to cavalry and if that's the case it's probably going to come to archers as well so infantry are not special we are not going to be the exclusive owners of smite damage i think it will come to all troop types rejecting friend request true stat tracking they talked about this a little bit great um more commanders from more civilizations um they said that they're planning on doing that and you can tell them who they want to add i've already reached out to them and said that you should add vlad the impaler and hathor hanzi hanzo um those are two commanders that i really really want i hope that they add them you can let them know what you want um here they're going to optimize how long the skill descriptions are that's great they're not going to change the skills they're just going to change how they're worded love that they're going to adjust range commanders as well uh there's not too many details here so we're not going to talk about it but guys that is everything in the face-to-face -face with the developers um i would love to know your thoughts about all of this in the comments section below um i i am i i'm excited for changes to the equipment system i'm happy to work on new equipment i'm happy to upgrade existing equipment but i think they're shooting themselves in the foot i think we're going to end up in the same exact position next year or the year after when they eventually add new equipment to the game i think they will they basically confirm that they will in my mind right so yeah it is what it is and also let me know who you think this commander is right here i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below and with all that being said guys if you made it to the end of this video which is way longer than i thought it would be drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps this video get out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there again comment down below on everything that we've talked about and consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video we're so close to 60,000 subscribers and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace